Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw you in 2018 when you. I think you had just signed with the Royals, to be honest. Yeah. I, I so I signed in 16, but then did I meet you in Lexington or was it in uh, Arizona? I think I think Arizona. Might have been Arizona. Anyways, Jay, we met when I was with the Royals, and then he followed me on Instagram. I think I gave you some gear, something around like a shirt or whatever. And then uh, a couple years go by, and I get traded to Schaumburg or whatever. Well, I guess kept back in up. touch during that time, though. Yeah, we kept in touch, Instagram, whatever. And then Liam gets on with uh, Schaumburg to kind of like follow their playoff run and all that stuff. So I saw you in Gateway, right? Yeah, and then, like a week and, before. Like a week before. And I was like, oh, shoot, this is the coolest thing. Like, I saw you, you know, five years ago, and I'm seeing you yeah. again. And then two weeks later, I get traded to Schaumburg, where Liam yeah. is. So then we're just hanging out in the locker room or whatever. And um, hey, did they, you didn't even tell me anything. I just showed up one day, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty That's funny. Cool. It was That's pretty funny. Story. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, then he kind of became my best friend on the team. And uh, we've had in the, in the dugouts and everything, we've had a, we had a, we had a lot of non-baseball related meaningful talks, man. Like, yeah. We were, we got in some deep conversation. <laughs> you got to pass the time somehow, right? <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I guess my first question for you guys was uh, um, obviously uh, – for some context for the viewers, uh, Jay is currently the punter at Notre Dame, and Jeff is a professional baseball pitcher. Um, still, work, uh, getting back to the minors, like I am still working my hardest on that. It's still early, so it's all good. We got time, but yeah, just let you know, I'm still working on that. And uh, um, yeah, you want to just you guys want to describe how uh, how it was like? Uh, uh, sorry. How it was being brought up in like a very athletic household and kids playing sports and seemingly being pretty successful at sports. Yeah, you got it, Jay. Take take it away. <laughs> well, I guess the first thing just to mention, you know, we're very lucky to have the parents that we have and to to have been brought up the way we were. Um, but I will say that we had a pretty competitive household too. You know, there's. <laughs> a pretty good gap between me and Jeffrey. Um, and I imagine before I came around and before I can remember Bradley and Jeffrey were probably pretty competitive too. And I can just remember playing like knee football and, you know, throwing baseball with Jeffrey and doing all kinds of stuff. And like, it was always a competition and, you know, our dad's a baseball and football coach. So we had that side of it too. Um, you know, we had a coach that brought us up, but, we also had, at least I had, you know, Jeffrey, who, like, when I was in high school and middle school, like, he was at Alabama. So, like, I thought that was the coolest thing that my brother played college baseball, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like I had to leg up because I had somebody, like, help me. and Leg like, up, no pun intended. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, man, that's – that covers a lot of it. I think the the – just the nature of growing up in a competitive household with three boys, our older brother, Bradley's 27. I'm 20, excuse me, he's 28. I'm 26. Jay, you're what? 21. So, I mean, we're kind of, kind of close in age. So just competing in whatever it is that we were doing, whether it was sports, baseball or football or playing basketball in the driveway or anything like that. And I think it just, um, it grew to the point where we got good enough, you know, me at baseball, Jay at football and Jay could have played, you know, baseball place too. I probably could have played football places, but you know, we chose our, our respective routes there. But I think just growing up in that household and having, uh, you know, parents that encouraged us and, and pushed us and challenged us. But then at the same time, we also had each other do the same thing. So um, it, it wasn't hard. Um, mm -hmm. the, the playing baseball, playing football, the hard work, all that is hard. But when you look at our situation, it wasn't it so much of it was done for us, you know, it was just like yeah. handed to us um, from that regard. So um, I think that just hits the nail on the head, just a competitive upbringing and childhood and with each other. So. And then when you guys were younger, did you uh, play? Uh, I assume you guys played multiple sports. And then when was it that you guys like uh, uh, broke down your route that you chose? And uh, what went into that decision for you both? 
Go ahead, Jim. You go first. Yeah. So I played baseball and football for the most part. I played basketball for a couple of years, but I think competitive travel basketball at like Locust Fork, uh, like when I was in elementary school, you know, so I was like, that doesn't really count. But <laughs> I played baseball and football the rest of the time, and I played baseball up until my junior year um because I, w- I didn't play my senior year because I graduated high school early to go to college early to start as an early enrollee so I guess it was the summer going into uh my senior football season I guess that I realized that that's what I was going to do um so sounds about right and then uh, what I, about you, I, I mean, I think I knew I wanted to play baseball at Alabama since I was seven. So, um, do you play everything football else. when you were younger? Did you play football when you were younger? Uh, I actually didn't play until I was in, I think, eighth grade. Um, yeah. and and I had a passion, desire for football too, but mm-hmm. everything else for some reason was always kind of secondary. Um, not on purpose, but I think baseball was always just at the forefront. Like. I was always really good at it. I was always having fun doing it. I knew that I was, um, I don't want to say better than anybody at it, but just growing up, you could tell that that I was just as good, if, if not better than some people, that I was going to be good at it down the road too. So basketball and football and anything else kind of became secondary. I played football all through high school, and I didn't play basketball my, uh, my junior and senior year too, um, but more so just because of the situation I was in at Locust Fork and transferring from Hoover out there and then actually transferred back to Hoover my senior year to play baseball. Um, not to play baseball, but my dad got a job over there. So we moved back to Hoover. It's a whole nother story, but, um, yeah, I, I played all of them, but baseball was always the one that I knew I wanted to do. Um, so if some crazy scenario happened with football, right, you know, could have got a, a scholarship, to play, uh, you know, quarterback in Alabama, then I obviously would have potentially chosen that. Yeah. Um, but, but the baseball route was, was so head on straight away wide open for me that um everything else kind of was secondary to it mm. okay and then Jay... probably like the opposite for me because <laughs> Je- obviously jeffrey's said like he knew he was gonna play baseball i honestly like could probably debate like sometimes i wish i had tried to play baseball instead you know and I the reason that, I... that, that debate in my head too i wish sometimes i would have played football but yeah you know, that, that's just because, like, you were talking about the competitive side that we always had. Like, we were we were pretty good at both of them. Well, and... I think baseball was both our first love because that was the first thing that we played. Yeah. So. That's pretty standard, I think. You play that when you're younger anyway. So, yeah. and then dad, dad playing baseball and then, you know, growing up Red Sox fans and the Red Sox-Yankee rivalry and us watching Nesson and, like, that's like a childhood staple for me, like, sitting there with – you and Bradley and dad and Jeremy, Jeremy and Don Orsillo are on Ness and talking and we got, you know, hamburgers on a grill or whatever. And it's like, we're all getting excited to watch the Red Sox and Yankees play. Like that was, yeah. and I'm you know, 10 or 12 years old. Like, so the, the dream of playing the big leagues was always there too, but Alabama was first for me. And, but back to that point, baseball was, I think both, definitely both of our first loves. And then Jay, how did you uh, end up uh, becoming the punter at Notre Dame? Cause uh, punting, it's not a, it's not necessarily a position where there's like receiver or anything or defensive back where you got a, like a lot of chances to make a different team. Like punters is really only like, like I'm guessing one per team, maybe two, if we got a backup, but like sometimes a lot of schools, I doubt that. Like it's yeah. kind of a, kind of a tough position, especially with punting. Cause like everyone can only like punt so far. So it's like, and if everyone's super good at it, I mean like those, like, mm-hmm. like every inch kind of matters with it. So <laughs> how did that so- go? I didn't – I guess it was my freshman or sophomore year of high school. And I think both me and Jeffrey and probably our oldest brother Bradley, we probably all did it. And I know my dad did it. You know, you just get bored and you're by yourself. You go out in the yard and you just kick, like, just to do it, just to have have something to do. and Just see what happens, see where the ball goes. Yeah, and then I guess we got to the point where, we're like, both me and Jeffrey, like, we just got good at it and – one more thing, we started competing with each other, and we still do to this day because Jeffrey can still punt really well. Oh, yeah. But I was about to say, you better give credit where credit's due, son. 
Hey, I am. <laughs> but, you know, I the, the starting punter my freshman year in high school was like the strong safety. And he was pretty good. I mean, I, I just don't think he really had desire to do it. Oh, and yeah. so I kind of saw an opportunity and just tried to work at it a little more and more. And I, I guess I started my sophomore year and then I actually started getting going to a, a punting and kicking coach. Um, and that's kind of where I started to get better. And I played quarterback in high school, so it wasn't like that was the only thing I did. I was going to ask you a PO. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, so did that up into my senior year. And, you know, my going into my senior year, I had gone to a bunch of camps and got ranked nationally and uh, had gotten some talk from coaches and colleges and stuff like that and, like, mail and letters and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I ended up getting two offers, three offers, uh, Missouri, Mississippi State, and Notre Dame. And I ended up going to Notre Dame and had several preferred walk-ons. But, yeah, that's how I got here. Um, yeah, that's awesome. How did uh, – how has uh, your punting kind of improved? And uh, what do you – what do you – what do you – what's like a – uh, college punters practicing. I've fallen asleep at practice before. Because I, 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 when I was younger, I, I played a lot of, I played a lot of kicker, and uh, the practices were pretty lonely and boring for me. So <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we have, I don't, the the way that we do it, and a lot of places do it, is you have eighteen, twenty periods of practice, just to take a range, you know, and each period's five minutes, you know, so there's, there's probably two to four periods in an entire practice where I actually have to do something. So 10 to 20 minutes of the entire hour and a half, two hour practice that I actually have to do something. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the time I either just focus on a couple small things and kind of do some drill work and just, you know, kind of like a baseball player would hit off the tee, kind of like that. Um, and the rest of the time, I mean, it's just, you know, watch. I get to watch. You sound like a P.O. in baseball. Yeah, I get to sit and watch a college football team, you know, up close and personal. And, you know, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, definitely is cool. And what I was uh, getting, what I was hearing earlier is uh, you're telling me you uh, might be the next Johnny Hecker, played quarterback in high school. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. There might be some trick plays coming. Hey, I'm in favor. <laughs> <laughs> your form i don't know if our coach is <laughs> <laughs> um and then how have you guys uh because when i was filming with schellenberg you guys uh seemed like jeff called you pretty regularly how do you guys stay in touch like with the rest of your family and you and jeff well i think Seems like that's pretty important you can go off of this too jeffrey but i mean for me being away from home and being away from everybody can be tough sometimes you know so I stay on the phone very often. I call Jeffrey like three times a day, you know. <laughs> it's an <laughs> understatement probably. I mean, we talk about everything too, you know. So just, you know, makes you feel feel a little closer to home and closer to everybody. And, you know, you still have those relationships and, you know, that's family. So you got to stay close. Yeah. And then uh, – so when you guys were growing up, you said uh, your dad taught you guys how to punt, and uh, what was uh, what was that like? What were you, your guys is both some of your favorite things punting? Jerry, oh, um, that's a tough question because it was one of those things where I didn't really know what I was doing, and you kind of like you stumble. I guess being a decent athlete, you like stumble upon figuring it out. You don't know what you're doing, but you end up being decent at it. You end up being okay at it. And you you drop the ball and kick it, and it goes far, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. So then you try it again and again and again, and obviously repetition is going to eventually lead to you know, doing something right. So it wasn't so much that I like enjoyed it for the sake of me knowing what I was doing and the ins and outs of it like I know pitching these days. You know, it's not like that. But um, 
you know, growing up again, you go back to the competitive side of things and you have a passion to be good at something. Even if you're not very good, you try to learn, you try and, and progress and grow in it and all those things. And I think having my dad who punted, played quarterback in high school, played college baseball at UAB. Um, so he was an athlete too. Our mom was a gymnast. She was an athlete. So that competitive inner drive or whatever you want to call it was always there. So no matter if it was punting or baseball or quarterback or whatever it was, that kind of would, would manifest itself in that. So when you relate that to punting, it's not that we knew what we were doing, but we were just super like ultra competitive with it. And we knew like hey, one of those we have guys on the baseball team that throws the knuckleball. <laughs> Essentially it's the same thing. Of course, I feel like throwing a knuckleball might, might be harder than All right, football. A, a slider a split and you're not a pitcher. <laughs> Yeah, same thing. So you like you have fun with it. And for long, you're like, oh, wow, I'm actually pretty good at this. I could probably get on the field and do this. And I think that's what happened mainly with Jay. Um, football for me growing up, I, I mean, I I wasn't that athletic when it comes to speed and agility and, and all those things. And um, so, I, I mean, I was slow and small and probably scared to get hit for the most part up until I was a sophomore in high school. And um, so I was like, hey, if I can get on the field and punt, I don't have to get hit. So maybe that's kind of like my end, right? So I could do it that way. Um, and then I ended up playing quarterback too. So I ended up doing both, but it started out as like, Hey, I'm, I'm decent at this. Maybe it'll get me on the field. Maybe I can try and progress and get a little bit better. But outside of that, there wasn't anything to it. Gotcha. And then uh, um, Jay, how do you uh, like, I didn't even know there was so much work that went in the plank uh, until I was uh, catching punts from Jeff and, uh, you guys, you guys kick spirals and there's backspin and I like, what, what goes into all that? And like, what, there's gotta be like, when you actually punt it, like you get it's like inches off the foot, like can mess everything up. Like how, how do you, how do you fine tune that? I mean, I guess you could compare it to being a pitcher, you know, like it's very mechanical and, mm-hmm. you know, you're very detailed and, and everything you do, uh, probably more detailed than you are as a pitcher, but. I mean, everything from the way your the ball comes out of your hand when you drop it to the way it hits your foot, you know, and where your swing is straight or you know whatever, um, and kind of where where on the field you are. So, you know, if you can kind of let loose and just kick it, or if you kind of got to be more controlled so it doesn't go to the end zone. Mm -hmm. And then. uh... Who uh, might might be an obvious answer, might not be because Jeff's uh, got kind of a boot on him to uh, who's who can who can kick farther. <laughs> I won't even argue. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just give it to him. That's I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna say Jay right now, obviously. <laughs> um, but I, I will you, say that if we, if you get three weeks, just to get a month just to work on straight punting, you know, my challenge that. If I get a little prep time and a little chance to, to get into it, maybe, maybe so. But going back to Jay's uh, senior year of high school, going into Notre Dame as freshman year, kind of that whole window of time there, we would go um, to Hillcrest and we would punt on the football field. And of course he's going Notre Dame. I mean, he's big shot, whatever. I hadn't played football obviously in years. I'm, I'm four years or three years into pro ball at this point and uh, playing baseball. So, I mean, I just mess around doing it, but, we would have some of the most competitive, like we got the stopwatch out there. We got the whistle out there. We got the camera out there just in a bag of 20 balls. And it's like, Hey, we're going to cough in this to the right, or we're just going to launch it down the middle and kick as far as we can, or we're going for hang time or anything like that. And we would compete mm-hmm. back and forth for two hours, kicking footballs. Wow. Um, we should have like, more, probably more than we should have. Yeah. But uh, I, I'd say around then we were pretty close. I mean, we were, he was he was maybe a tick ahead of me, um, but at at this point, I mean he's he's light years ahead of me now. I haven't done it in years, and he's gotten. I've been I in the weight averaged, room, man. Well, you've been in the weight room. I think you averaged thirty nine and a half your first year. You've had, you averaged forty two and a half your second year. Now you're at forty five or something. So I mean you're trending the right direction, right? So I'm I'm going the other way. So <laughs> yeah, at least you're honest. Thanks. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> My brother just got here. This is Devin. Uh, Hello, Devin. I'm What's better than mine. Not as much as I am. That's a lie. <laughs> Brother's got to compete a little bit, right? Oh, yeah. 
Like what? For an example. Yeah, what do you mean football? Yeah, receiver. I could play quarterback and a decent at receiver. You can't throw for shit. <laughs> yeah, this, this, he's a, yeah, you're like a PO, man. Like one position. Man. I'm like a taste of hell. I'm, I'm first time. Basketball? Yeah, basketball. You got me there. <laughs> Running, you got me there. Jumping. Well, jumping. That, that's, that's a count. Ball. I don't even count jump. You can't take a soccer ball for shit. No, I can't. You can't touch me in the way. Yeah. Well, you hardly do that. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Shut up. <laughs> All right, so, um, Jay, how would you describe how uh, Notre Dame's season has gone so far this year? And uh, um, where do you think you guys can, can end up? Because you're ranked eight, what, eight right now, and uh, the spread on your game this weekend is you guys minus 17. Yeah, yeah, I feel um, pretty good about that. Yeah, I do too. Um, I think we've made a ton of improvements, you know, everywhere. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Um, obviously, we would like to have the Cincinnati game back because, um, I mean, everybody has their opinions and, you know, whatever. But yeah. I think if, if we played the football that we're playing right now against them, I don't think it would have been mm-hmm. what it was. But reality of it is that's what happens you know so we kind of put ourselves in a hole from the beginning but you know I think we're turning in the right way and you know we're I think we're starting to play a lot a lot better together and turning in the right direction um so I don't know I mean I I'd, I'd like to think that we'll, that we'll get into the playoff you know that'd be that'd be great if mm. you know a couple more teams ahead of us you know go down and we we can finish our business and hopefully get in but I, I imagine uh spot in the playoff or you know new year six you know whatever we'll see i mean i've been crunching numbers here just because i got so much time on my hands with with this thing going on right so um if you if you look at it and if georgia beats alabama which at this rate i think they should then that's gonna bump you guys up because alabama dropped uh Somehow Michigan is ahead of Michigan State when Michigan State beat Michigan. I'll never yeah. figure that one out. How That's ahead good head for us, up. though. Right. But the thing is, for you guys, what happens is uh, Ohio State plays uh, Michigan, and I think they'll probably win that game. So now Michigan's out. So now Alabama's out. So you're going to jump two spots just from that. So now you're going from eight to six yep. pretty quick. Hopefully um, Oregon loses this week. If Utah can beat Oregon, now you're jumping three spots. So, I mean, yeah, you need a little bit of help, but none of it is, like, completely out of the ordinary to happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, being at number eight, I think, is – is number one, is too low. But at the same time, I think y'all are going to jump probably two to three spots at least after this week, depending on what happens. Well, I mean, if the way that it's set up, the way people say it is, then we have the best loss in the country, yet we're still eight. 100%. You know? So, 100%. that doesn't make much sense to me. Y'all should be ahead of Michigan and Michigan State. Michigan beat Michigan State beat Michigan, and then Michigan State lost to Purdue. And we beat Purdue pretty, pretty touch, handily. Touchdown or ten points or something like that. Yeah, so you should be in front of both of them. Right, you should be number six right now. Yeah. So. Oh well. And if you're six right now, and then Alabama loses in the SEC championship, and then they went out, then you're going to be five, and then if Oregon loses, then you're four. And oh, there so you go. I mean, it's that it's, it's you're going to be that close, I guess. I think, you know, I think we're going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot like Notre Dame and Texas A&M last year. You know, we could be one or the other. Yeah. So True. I don't know. We'll see. True. And then, uh, Jeff, how disappointed would you be uh, if uh, you're kind of like you got both sides here, Alabama and Notre Dame? And, Alabama could very easily like lose, and I think they might be projected to. But uh, then that's good for your brother. So where are you at with that? Because all all I heard was filming worldwide twenty four seven. Honestly, it's is a win win because if I'm never going to root against Alabama, so there's number one. I mean, I, I bleed crimson, right? So roll tide till I die type deal. So I'm going to always pull for them, and I want them to do well. I hope they they win out, and I hope they beat Georgia. But if they don't. I'm completely fine with that because that's just going to give Jay a chance to play in a, in a playoff game potentially. And another um, one, 
which which I'll be at. So that's you know that's that's a win 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 in my opinion. So I'm not going to be mad about that. You already uh, got to see Alabama beat Notre Dame one time. I did, and I and I I wore Notre Dame on the outside, but I had Alabama underneath, um, and I had to sit in the Notre Dame section. So ah, couldn't cheer. Yeah. That was tough, to be honest with you. I did it, but it was tough. And then, uh, Jay, what is uh, – so uh, with your punting, what's your, what's your favorite part about it, and what do you think you could – like how far do you hope to take it? Like what are your, what's your plan in the next year and a half? Which... I'd like to take it as far as I can and play for as long as I can. Um, we'll see how that goes. Keep trying and – put in all the work I can and, you know, see where it takes me. But mm. I think – what was the first part of that question again? I forgot. Oh, what's your favorite part about punting? Oh, yeah. So, I think my favorite part is just kind of – not necessarily the pressure, but just kind of – I mean, a, a lot of people don't think about it. Yeah. You know, like they don't think about punting being an important part. But, you know, I think a lot of people would say that the the punt play is the most important play of the game. You know, mm. most important playing football, because if something goes wrong or if something bad happens or if you pin one on the one yard line, you know, like that can swing a game just like that. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, I think it's it's low key, but it also can can change the momentum of a game really quick. So I kind of like just kind of the weight it holds, if that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily that it's stressful or that there's a lot of pressure, but, you know, you could end up impacting the game a, a pretty good deal. So. Nobody really uh, minds or cares about the punter until they just shake one punt, then all of a sudden you're, yeah. <laughs> you're, everyone wants you to get cut. So it, it can be a stressful position. Exactly. Yeah. Now, do you like punting? On, obviously, you like punting, but do you like punting during a game, or do you hope you never got to go out there? Or do, you, uh, or, or do you hope you get the punt like at least one, two times? What do you, what's your stance on that? I like getting to punt in the games. I usually like for us to have the lead when we punt. Okay. Um, makes everything smoother because, you know, why? you're yeah, all back why? Why? What's the why behind that. What do you mean? Why do you want to have the lead when you punt? Yeah, I was going to ask that. Is it, does it take stress off then? Because you, Not necessarily you know, stress, but, I mean, it just like you're giving the ball back to the other team, you know? Mm-hmm. So – it's just a good feeling to know that, hey, if we're going to give the ball back to the other team, try to flip the field, yeah, they might have to drive 80-something yards, but we're still a hit, you know, like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, shouldn't, yeah, shouldn't it carry the same weight if you're, say, you're down a score? and It does. You, know, you, got, you got a three and out, and you're going to pin them, and you're like, hey, if we make a stop, we're going to get good field position because I just pinned them inside the 10 or whatever. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta look two steps ahead. Yeah. yeah. Playing chess, not checkers. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. And then uh Jeff, I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask you this regardless over Instagram, but uh how's the how's the rehab going? And that's kind of the unfortunate thing with baseball, especially being a pitcher. Like punter mm-hmm. is normally that's a safe position, pitcher, like yeah, you don't get hit or anything, but like you you definitely your arm goes to hell. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been good. I'm, it's uh 15 days, so just over two weeks out of surgery. Um, I'm in a brace, so I'm I'm kind of mobilized. I can take it off and all those things. I'm doing rehab. Um, started some strengthening exercises, a lot of shoulder work, obviously too, just to to stay on top of that. But um, the big thing right now is just trying to get my range of motion back with flexion and extension, and um, it's coming along. I mean, it's it's a, a tedious process. So it, it's going to take some time and it's going to be very monotonous yeah. and very boring, but um, it's worth it. I mean, if it's going to get me healthy and get me back and hopefully better than I was even before, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to take it head on and get after it and see where we get, but so far so good. So hopefully we can just keep going on this road and uh, we'll be good to go in a couple months. Awesome. And then uh, you're going to get the, your full, couple months of training and prep time not just the three weeks or whatever you had <laughs> last yeah year. right that was that wasn't the smartest move it, it probably is what led me to this situation in the first place but uh but yeah i should have 
I don't know when I'll start throwing the exact date if it's yeah. three months out or four months out or whatever, but <clears throat> um, spring training will be end of March, first of April, maybe somewhere in there. Hmm. Um, and I think my timetable to get off a mound is somewhere around there. So hopefully if I miss any time this season, maybe like the first couple of weeks, uh, but shouldn't be, shouldn't be too much. I should be ready to go. Gotcha. And then, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, possibly it's why you're here, but like, I mean, sometimes like at the same time, like don't question it. You had like the best season of your career, uh, stats wise. <laughs> so like, I don't know, I mean, it sort of worked. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you find a way, you know, no matter what happens and, I hate that I got hurt, but I do look yeah, back and I'm thankful for the, the opportunity. I got to start again. That was awesome. Hmm. I got traded for the first time in my career, won a championship. Like a lot of stuff happened, you know, throughout the season that was really, really positive and really good. Um, obviously, it resulted in the injury, but I, I, mean, I can't be that upset at it. You know, it is what it is. It's an opportunity for me to grow and learn. And um, I've never had a serious injury before. So I'm in the position where I can and can learn from it and relate to people now because everyone, I say everyone, but a lot of people in baseball, a majority in baseball have had arm injuries and I never had one. Yeah. So I couldn't relate on that level, I guess. So now I'm yeah. in the position where I can do that. Gotcha. And then, uh, yeah. So you guys, uh, what, what does, uh, what was, uh, what, what does Bradley do? Bradley is, he's married. He's 20. How old is he? 28, Jay? Eight. I can't keep up with him. Um, <laughs> he works for a, what I guess will be listed as like a, a tech company. Software um, company. Yeah, yeah he works software. for software company, Salesforce, all this stuff. And gets to travel a little bit, gets to work from home, all those things. Um, so, yeah, he's he was an athlete as well. He played, played football and baseball, football all the way through high school. Um, he was a, a football manager at Alabama for a couple of years and then went oh. down to Florida Atlantic with Lane Kiffin as an offensive analyst and was going to do the football coaching route, but things just didn't work out. Um, a couple of different reasons there, but coming back home, started working and got married and all that stuff. So, um, but he, he's just as competitive um, mm-hmm. just because he might not be as athletic or whatever. doesn't, doesn't mean that he doesn't have that drive or that oh, competitive sure. side. I mean, he, he had it just like we talked about earlier playing knee football or, uh, yeah. playing baseball or basketball in the driveway. I mean, he had the same exact thing. So um, a lot of, a lot of, I mean, I know he's not on the video, but a lot of props to him because if we didn't have yeah. him, he's kind of the ring bearer, the, the first one to do it for us. So um, got to give credit where credit's due. I'm glad you guys mentioned that knee football. I thought that was just a thing my brother and I did when we were younger. Like, oh. uh, <laughs> how, how, did, how did you do it? Please explain how you did it just so we could compare here. So um, we have – we did it on the first floor of the house. We had a, uh, luckily we have hardwood now there, but luckily we had carpet at the time. So mm-hmm. we would, uh, set up the end zone. Yeah. End zones were, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, they're all the open space when you walk in the door, then like the living area, whatever set mm-hmm. like 20, 30 feet down the, the end zones were like the front door area and like the tile there. So that kind of hurt if you're going in. Fuck. but uh <laughs> then uh we'd set up end zones near the stairs whatever and we just uh we had it where you had to have one passing play per drive and uh wow. so you just throw it to yourself and if you get picked on it's kind of how it's gonna be yeah. you can't just can't just snap and run because that's great uh that i yeah, remember that's how, that's how we did i think we had four yeah. downs no first downs yeah yeah and scores ended up being like 87 72 something like that. <laughs> I just remember sweating. Like when we would get done, we would be burning up. Like, oh yeah. You learn quickly. You gotta wear sweatpants. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, we had these uh like these foam mattresses. foam mattresses, these mm-hmm. twin mattresses that were probably like three or four inches thick. Um, and we would either put them together to make it a little bit wider, or put them long ways to make it longer. Um, and so we were we were basically playing on that. So it helped a little bit with the the. Definitely you know, the hard water, the concrete under there, or whatever. But um, I, I was—I hate to to be this guy, but I definitely won a lot of those, Jay. So yeah, sorry, I sorry. was like eight, and you were fifteen. <laughs> we're not seven years apart, dude. We're five years apart. <laughs> whatever. How many? How many pictures you guys end up breaking? How, how much stuff you guys end up breaking? <laughs> Bro, we probably broke lamps, probably... pictures. <laughs> In tables, coffee tables, man, we broke doors. Doors. I mean, 
uh, there's too many to count, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Having a competitive, like athletes at the house, or whatever, as kids, it's uh, definitely not fun for the parents, but it's, <laughs> it's, well, they, they're the one that raises to be like that. So they're going to have to yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> or their fault. And then uh, where do you guys uh, ask you about this? Where, I mean, I kind of asked Jay, but where do you guys hope to, uh, with both of your careers, like where do you, where do you hope to be in a couple of years? I kind of talked uh, in Schaumburg with Jeff about this, about um, you guys both want to continue playing as long as you can and, just uh, where do you where do you hope life takes you? And end this off. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, like I said, I mean, as long as you know I'm good enough, or you know, as long as they allow me to play, I'm gonna play. You know, so mm-hmm. I'm excited to see where that goes and where it takes me and what opportunities I get and you know all that stuff. So I feel that. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you guys are just going with the flow. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm in the same boat in some regards, but obviously with the injury right now, it, it's kind of a little wrinkle in there just to to not make it more difficult. I mean, I know I'll have some places to go. I'm not going to say play because I have to make a team, right? But I've had two really good years in the Frontier League, and I, oh, I think sure. I have a fairly good rep there and, and plenty of managers and, and coaches and whatnot that would vouch for me and all those things. But mm-hmm. um, obviously the goal is to get picked up and play affiliated ball and hopefully yeah. get to big leagues one day. And if I didn't believe that I could do that, then I wouldn't be playing anymore. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. I mean, I, in, in two or three years where I see myself, hopefully in the big leagues, I mean, I, I legitimately see that. Um, but at the same time, I also know that, I'm very lucky to be playing the game at, at 27 when well, I'm about to be 27 to start the season this year. So the fact that I'm 27 playing professional baseball is in my opinion, a huge blessing. And um, whether I play another 10 years or another one year um, it's out of, out of my control in some regard. So mm-hmm. I don't think too much about where I'm going to be uh, career wise in the game in four or five years. I'm more concerned with doing my best tomorrow and having fun with it and embracing it and, if yeah. that means that I get picked up and, and I get an opportunity, great. If not, then at least I'm going to have fun doing it. I'm going to get after it. I'm going to, you know, build the relationships and I'm going to embrace the journey and all that, the, the stuff that you hear all the time, but, but be intentional about doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Um, 